Uh, well, I'll start recording. Uh, can everyone hear me well? You can type on the chat. Um, this is like the old days uh, of online COVID classes. So is, is can you hear me well? Is that okay? I think I can hear you well. Oh, good, good. So, um, yeah, like you, I mean, you can interrupt me like uh, um, if you want to unmute yourselves or you can also type on the chat. I'll be checking the chat. Um, so let's just see. Uh, I was because I was thinking, uh, I mean, I was just checking like what topics we have left, which would be important to work on. There are really not many things left. Um, I feel like probably the most useful thing would be to go on a little bit more details or certain things about involving involving relations and functions that uh, I could we could discuss. Uh, maybe a couple more things about sets as well. So my idea, um, I mean, I think uh, for the final, uh, there in terms of topics, it won't be that different from this second midterm. I mean, like the final obviously would be a final, so there will be questions like identical to or very similar to those on the first midterm. But I'm just saying, like, I don't think, uh, I think the bulk, the majority of the problems will be, again, about functions and relations and things like that. Um, so. Yeah, my goal for today, I probably I don't think I will. It, it will take me all all the lecture. I was just going to explain something that's like very subtle but very important when it comes to relations, and this is something that does get used a lot of the time in different in future courses. So that seemed like a important thing to discuss today. Um, and after that, uh, yeah, next week I'll I'll think a little bit more about what else could, I could mention and. So that after the Thanksgiving break, uh, again, we we resume to back to normal, back in person. And um, um, then we can do the, do the workshops and quizzes again. Uh, are there any questions before I start, maybe? I'll just give you a couple of seconds. Let me start sharing my screen, my iPad. Uh, yeah, I haven't done these lectures in a while uh, when they're on Zoom, so uh, it may be a little bit odd. So again, I'll post the lecture. I'm recording them, so I'll post them on the Canvas side in case. Uh, uh, yeah, so don't worry about it if you lose connection or whatever for a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, but basically, like what I wanted to discuss today, if you remember um, this thing about, um, and I will also upload the, the notes, by the way. Um, if you remember like the list of problems, like of extra problems for, for our course, like there was this problem 89, which was about how to define um, the rational numbers. And there's like a important point there that is uh, kind of, um, which you, uh, it, it is something that has to be like discussed like in some detail. So this was like on the extra problems PDF. And this was uh, related to defining the rational numbers. So um, I believe at least part of it had been, um, I had given you this like for one of these like assignments on the mirror side, but I, I, uh, I in the end, I didn't tell you to do all of, all of the assignment because there was a, a, a part that was a little bit com uh, complicated to, to, to for you to answer because we had not gone into a lot of details on, on this issue. So let me just remind you about the rational numbers which we have talked about before. Right, so when you have a rational number, you have something like, well, two would be a rational number, one would be an irrational number, 
Zero would also be a rational number. Um, three halves is also a rational number, right? Um, five halves, negative seven nines, 13 over two, or well, I'm putting the two a lot in the numerator, 13 fourths, et cetera, right? So a rational number like um, was simply, right, a rational number is really a ratio is a ratio of two of two integers, right? Well, uh, obviously with the constraint or uh, with the important detail that the that in the denominator, right? In this ratio, like the denominator can be cannot be zero. So So what I'm trying to say, like um, one of the things that like happens with rational numbers is that uh, the same rational, because it is a ratio, the same rational number can be represented in different ways, right? So so this is like a warning that Uh, so for ex what do I mean by that? Well, for example, if you take the number two, that's also like the same as uh, four four halves, right? Or it would also be the same as um, negative six divided by what? Negative three, correct? Um, and there are other ways to represent it, right? So like the same, Dot dot dot. Like yeah, in fact, like uh, that that so like the same number with uh, which is represented by two, uh, etc. The same number two can be written in, uh, in different ways. Like uh, maybe let's say one that's like a fraction, like one third. That could also be like you know, uh, maybe it's more clear here. Like you just multiply the numerator and the denominator by your favorite uh, integer. So that would be also the same as three nines. Or it would be the same as negative, uh, what? Let's say negative two over negative six, etc. Right. So, so the uh, the the thing is like uh, when you start thinking about rational numbers, you have to think about uh, the fact that they can be represented in multiple ways, right? Uh, as a, so a rational number is not just like a ratio, right? So let me give it like, um, let me explain this in a different way. If you have two integers, right? PQ, you can form uh, the rational number P over Q, right? Uh, but the issue is that this same rational number can be obtained from other integers, right? But the same, but the same rational number can be obtained from other pairs, right? Uh, for example, 2p and 2q will give also 2p over 2q, which is p over q. Is that making, uh, well, maybe I should stop because also uh, I don't know how fast I am writing things on the iPad, but is this making sense so far so good? Uh, any questions up to this point?
So what I'm trying to say is that um, we uh, from like you want to think of a of a rational number as a pair of of integers, right? But you have to be a little bit more careful because of this fact that this pair of integers is not unique. So the question is, when does this happen, right? When When is it the case the two pairs, let's call them PQ and P tilde, Q tilde, produce the same uh, rational number? So what I mean is, uh, what I'm asking is, when is it that PQ so the question is, when is it that P over Q equals P tilde over Q tilde, right? And uh, I mean, I don't know if you remember uh, when this equality happens, right? Like uh, an equality between two ratios, like another way to re-express it, it, for this to happen, you need uh, P times Q tilde to be the same as um, P tilde times Q, right? That's what we need. Uh, essentially, you cross multiply, uh, right? Um, multiply both sides by Q tilde and multiply both sides by Q, okay? And uh, so far, so why am I saying this? Because here's like, a diff like here's something that then you can do. So like here's like um, one thing that you can do. So you can define, so on the set, a, which is C dot C tilde. Uh, oh, let me, let me write it first like this way. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. On this set, sorry, uh, this looks a little bit ugly. This is like the, the set of integers. Uh, so what it, what is this like? What is this set like? It is a Cartesian product, right? So I don't know if you remember like what the notation was for a Cartesian product. It's pairs, right? It's pairs p comma q, where p is an integer, and q is a non-zero integer, right? Like this is what this second notation means. Like let me again write this more nicely. So on this set, one can define an equivalence relation uh, let's call it R, where TQ PQ is related to P tilde, Q tilde. What do you think would be the relation? <laughs> it's essentially the one that I, I wrote uh, in purple, right? That P tilde, P, Q tilde equals P tilde, Q. So again, important to remark, I mean, uh, I believe like one of the assignments, like one of the assignments uh, on the on, on the mirror side had been to check that this was an equivalence relation, if, if you remember it. So one of the assignments, or it was a uh, very similar to this. Uh, 
Okay. And then the idea is to define the rational numbers as the equivalence classes of this relation. So, so then then you define like the important thing to emphasize here is that this is like an actual definition you define the not do you define p over q as the equivalence class uh, of of the pair pq Is that making sense? Any, I should stop here to see if there are any questions. Again, you can either like unmute yourselves or if you want, you can type it on the chat, whatever is easier for you. Is this okay? So let's do an example of what I mean. So what uh, what is what according to this definition, right? What is one half? One half is the equivalence class of the pair one two. Okay. But what is the equivalence class of, of this? Remember, those are like uh, elements P tilde, Q tilde, such that one, two is related to P tilde, Q tilde, because the equivalence class of an element was just like all those elements that relate to it. So what is P tilde, Q, P tilde, Q tilde? Well, the, the condition for the relation was uh, the cross multiplication, right? That one times Q tilde is two times P tilde, right? And so that means that these are the pairs P tilde, Q tilde, where Q tilde is two times P tilde. And so this is, <laughs> uh, you can replace Q tilde in terms of P, so this is P tilde, two P tilde, right? Where P is an integer. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, which is non-zero because uh, Q tilde was non-zero. And notice that this like kind of makes sense because this should be the same. Uh, I mean, right, like what I'm trying to say is that you're, you should think of this as representing this should, uh, this like represents the equivalence class. I mean, this is the same as the equivalence class of P tilde. I mean, this should, like you should think of this as representing like P tilde over two P tilde, which is one half. So it is like, it does make sense because it doesn't matter. I mean, essentially, maybe I should say it this way. What this is saying is like uh, this fraction is represented by by this pair or by the pair that you obtain by multiplying the the numerator and the denominator by an arbitrary number, right? Um, is that making sense? So like it is what you would expect from uh, for from the rational numbers to obey, right? Because for the rational numbers, if you have like a fraction. How do you get like equivalent fractions? You just multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same, by the same integer, right? Is that is that okay? Is that making sense? Uh, okay. So the uh, I mean, this is cool. Um, 
I mean, so like the idea is like, uh, there's like a way to think of that rational numbers as equivalence classes. Like, let me just like say that, in, uh, write that down, like the moral of the story. Uh, the rational numbers can be defined in terms of equivalent of an equivalence relation. Okay. Now, uh, but that's like as a set, right? Like this is so far. And again, if I'm going too fast or like you can you, you need more time to write down something, let me know on the chat or but this is like a definition of, of the rational numbers as a set, right? But the, you know, there are operations with the rational numbers that we usually do, right? But there are certain ar arithmetic operations that one can define on them. So for example, what is like a very natural thing that one does with fractions? One multiplies fractions, right? So what well, let's talk about, I, I think multiplication of fractions would be a good example for what I want to say today. Like, well, imagine I gave you two thirds, right? And I ask you to multiply that by five, six. Uh, well, you would just, what do you do? You just do numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator, right? So this gives you 10 over 18, which if you want, you can simplify, right? Like this is five ninths, but like um, that's like, um, um, I mean, like the simplification is not necessary, right? So multiplying fractions is just numerator, denominator, uh, numerator, numerator, denominator, denominator, right? But now uh, you want to check or you want to define the multiplication of the rational numbers, like thinking of them as equivalence classes, right? So now imagine that I have a rational number, uh, which is like P over Q. Well, let's do this. Uh, well, let's do it here. Let's say I have a rational number, which is PQ, right? And I have a rational number, which is RS. Right, so this like formula, if you just follow it, it's just PR times Q divided by QS, right? But now we have to think about this, not, not written this way, but uh, written in terms of uh, the equivalence class. So remember that uh, P over Q now is really like a shorthand notation. P over Q is now really like a, a, an abbreviation for like the equivalence class of PQ. And RS is an, abbrevi an abbreviation for the equivalence class of uh, R comma S. Is that making sense? So like really this is uh, what this means and this is what this means. So, um, what I'm trying to say is that uh, you sh you have to think now of the definition being given in terms of like the equivalence classes, right? So if you want to pre like what I'm you know when you have two rational numbers, their product gives you a rational number, right? So what I'm saying is that for this to work, I should set that equal to an equivalence class of something, right? Of a pair. Anyone anyone wants to guess what should I put it in the first entry? What should I put here?
Uh, yes. Good. PR. And what should I put in the denominator? Oh, denominator, right? Just um, QS. Okay, and now that's our definition for the multiplication, right? So we are defining now that the, the, this is how you would define definition of the multiplication. Of, of rational numbers in terms of equivalence class. Is that making sense so far? Uh, any questions up to this point? Is this so far so good? So for example, what should be two thirds from this perspective? What is two thirds times uh, five six? Well, that is the, the equivalence class of two thirds of two comma three, right? Times uh, the equivalence class of five comma six. Oh, let me open to my door, my dog. Um. <laughs> uh. So, uh, sorry about that, the labs. Um, so what would that be equal to? Um, if you follow this rule, right, that should be the equivalence class of two times five, which is 10, and three times six, which is 18, right? Which should corresponds to like should correspond to the number ten over eighteen, right? So it, it does seem to be making sense. Oh, Franklin, yeah, he's kind of uh, oh my god. Sorry, let me open him. I get him again. So that he can... Is that making sense so far, so good? But here's the, okay. Uh, this all seems very straightforward, but here's the potential issue. Here's a potential issue. Because we know, right? We know that like two thirds is, for example, the same as four six, right? We kind of know that already. So we better have, so we should, so we really need to have, so we need to have that four six times five six. Right, what should that be equal to? That should be give, give you the same answer, right? Like the only thing that I did was replace this fraction with something that should be representing the same rational number, right? So, um, so this product should still be the same as, this should still be the same as the equivalence class of 10 over 18, right? The answer cannot re uh, depend on the, re uh, the particular representative. So, but what that means is that uh, 
I don't know if like what I'm saying make is making sense. Uh, like uh, it's kind of difficult to realize that there can be an issue. Right, like, that's kind of what I'm trying to convey. So what I'm trying to say is that when you define, so when we we define. PQ times RS as the equivalence class of PQ RS, we need to know that we need to know that this formula does not depend on the specific uh, representative of the equivalence class. We need to know on the specific uh, representative is that making sense so what i'm trying to say is for example that uh if you replace uh this this one right with multiply what you get by multiplying h entered by two I mean if you look at the formula it does give you something that looks different right Because now there's a two, like, I mean, there's an extra two on each factor, but we have to kind of make check, uh, have, have to. So in this case, we would need to know that, like, um, we would need to know that this represents the same, like these two equivalence classes are the same, right? Because if these two equivalence classes were not the same, then like this formula would for the multiplication would not be well-defined, right? So we, in this case, we would need to know Is that making sense? So my point is that like, because we're thinking of rational numbers as equivalence classes, like the equivalence class has many elements, right? Uh, for example, uh, the equivalent, like the equivalence class of uh, one half, has all these elements inside of it. So you have to make sure that the multi, like the rule for multiplication that you give, does not depend on a specific way to represent that element. I, is that clear? I mean, that's like this is like the most. This is like the only important point of today. Like no, noticing that this can be an issue. Sorry, professor. Yes. Uh, why the equivalent class is PQ comma RS? Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, let me see. Let's see. Let's. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, oh. Okay, okay. Let, I may have done something weird. Oh, yeah, you're completely right. Like, oh, good, good that people are paying attention. Perfect. PR, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be. P R Q S, right? Did I make that mistake? No. Oh, good. Perfect. Excellent. Good, good. And then two P R two Q S. Perfect. Is this looking better now? There are so many different letters that, yeah, small typo. Is it has it is this fixed now? Now it looks good, right? Yeah, uh, perfect. Thank you. But like, what I don't know if what I'm trying to say, it, it, it's sometimes better to look at it first with an example, right? Like, 
the idea is that uh, this multiplication should not depend, like what I'm trying to say is that this multiplication cannot depend on the fact that you wrote two thirds as two thirds and not four six, right? If, if the answer depended on that, then you wouldn't have like a, a proper multiplication formula, right? The multiplication formula cannot depend on the way cannot depend on the way in which we chose a representative. We had done like a, a similar example with like, I don't know if you remember like this workshop where I asked you which functions define, like which formula define functions from the rationals to the rationals. Like just like as an aside. All right, like if you if you define something like this, right? As P, P plus Q, that would not give you a correct formula, right? This would not be a function. Since uh, f of two, I mean two thirds would be what? It, according to this formula, would be two plus three, which is five. But this is also this should also be the the same as four six, right? And this would be four plus six, which is ten. Is that making sense? So like this. It would not have worked as a formula defined over the rationals because it does not respect, uh, like it 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 does the like the the output that you get does depend on the way you chose to express a rational number. Is is that making sense? So what I'm trying to say is that we are we have to make sure that the same won't happen with the formula for multiplication. We have to make sure that the formula for multiplication of rational numbers does not depend on how you write it. Is that okay? So uh, what I mean, like, again, just returning to what we were doing, well, what, what we were doing is that we had PQ and RS, And I, I was saying that this should be equal to P R, oh my God, P R Q S. <laughs> you have to warn me if I make that mistake again. So what I'm saying is that what happens now if we choose a different representative for the equivalence class? So now let's choose, let us choose another element uh, P tilde, Q tilde in the same equivalence class as P. And I don't know if you remember, like what does it mean for the two elements to be in the same equivalence class? It meant that PQ, right? is related to P tilde, Q tilde. So what did that mean? It meant that P Q tilde is the same as P tilde Q. And if you want, you can divide by Q. So you can say that P tilde equals PQ okay so now what would be uh, what would be the product of P tilde Q tilde with RS Well, if you look at the formula, that should be the equivalence class of P tilde R, Q tilde S. 
right? But we already said, let's call this equation asterisk. So because of the equation asterisk, right? This is the same as what? Uh, this is the same as PQ tilde R over Q comma Q tilde S. Is that making sense? So the question is whether <laughs> right. So the question is like you okay, first do you notice that this looks it does look different. This does look different. Oops, this does look different from this, right? So the question is, does this is this so like the question is is this so is this in the same equivalence class as prqs okay let me stop here to check uh if there are any questions is it clear what i'm trying to do like I was trying to check if the multiplication depends on how you're writing the elements. So I chose a different way to write like a, an, a, a, a rational number, which I'm calling P tilde Q tilde, right? It's actually good that this class is recorded because I do think this requires a little bit of uh, playing it again and again to understand everything that's going on. But what I'm saying is that I, um, I wrote it as P tilde Q tilde. And if you do the product, you just realize that this gives you that. But now this looks different from this, right? And so to make sure that we get the, the correct answer, we have to make sure that they represent the same equivalence relation. And to make sure that two elements represent the same equivalence relation, they have to be related. So the question is like, is, so the question is, is P, P R Q S related to this thing, P Q tilde R over Q, Q tilde S, right? And if you remember like the form, the way to find out if there's like a, if they're related is that you do the cross multiplication, right? Like to, to check if two pairs are related, sorry, let me go back, 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 back. To check if two pairs are related, you multiply the first entry with the second entry and the and the second entry with the first entry. So you cross multiply them. So you're checking if PR times the second entry Q to the S equals the first entry, which is QS times the second entry. So this happens if and only if this, and on the, right, on the left hand side, you just get PR Q to the S and on the right hand side, you get like the Q's cancel, right? And so you get U, S, P, Q tilde R. And they are like the same, right? So they, and these are the same. So the formula is well defined. Is that okay? Are there any questions about this? Is it clear what I was trying to do? <laughs> it can be it, it can be confusing, right? But like the idea is that um. The idea is that um, 
when you have a, uh, I mean, when, like the idea is like when you have a, a, a equivalence relations and you want to define something on these equivalence relations, you must show that the answer does not depend on the representative, right? So this is like the general principle. And this is like what gets used over and over in math. So the general principle If you are working with equivalence classes, and want to define a, an operation on them, you must check that the answer does not depend on the representative chosen. So for example, um, here's another one that we can do. Like what would be P over Q plus R over S, right? Well, if you remember how fractions work, right? That should be, you use common denominator. So it's QS and this becomes PS plus QR, right? So that means that if you take the sum Like that means that this this gets represented by the pair PQ. And so in terms of equivalence classes, I'm defining the sum of two equivalence classes as the equivalence class of what? PS plus QR comma QS. Is that making sense? That's how the sum of rational numbers is defined now from this perspective in terms of equivalence classes. But like the point is that again, like what if you chose a different representative, right? What if you choose a different representative for for like the first equivalence class, for example. So now you're doing it with P tilde, Q tilde. Well, that would be um, the equivalence class of P tilde S plus Q R comma Q, uh, sorry, this is now Q tilde. Right, but as before, what was P tilde? P tilde was, uh, it's like the green equation, P Q tilde over Q. P Q tilde over Q S plus Q R comma Q S. Right, so what we're asking now is whether this is the same as this. So the question is, now the question for the sum becomes whether PS plus QR comma QS, is that related to PQ, PQ tilde Q of S plus Q tilde R comma Q tilde S. Is it clear that that's what we're asking now? Because if that happens, then the sum does not uh, depend on how you're representing it.
And again, like the condition for that is for the multi class multiplication to be correct, to be true. So when you multiply the 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 blue ones, you get Q, uh, well, you get PS plus QR times Q to the S. The question is whether this is the same as QS times P Q tilde over QS plus Q tilde R, right? And and this the left right the left hand side gives you P S squared Q tilde plus Q R Q tilde S, and then uh, the right 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 hand side the Qs cancel, so you get what. Uh, you get P Q, Q tilde S squared plus Q Q tilde R S. And this is the same, right? So the answer is well defined. Is that okay? So I mean, sort of the sum is well defined as well. So what I'm trying to explain is that that's how in general, when you have an equivalence relation, that's how in general you verify the like a formula in terms of an equivalence relation works. Like you have to assume that you were given a different representative and then check that the answer uh, gives you something that's equivalent to the original answer you began, you started with. Is that making sense? Again, like I think this is something that's worth reviewing, like watching again because it, it it can be very dense to like grasp the first time you see it. But uh, it is an important concept. I'll probably give you a, for sure on the final, a question where it's like, I give you an equivalence relation and I ask you to check that an operation is well-defined. And that by that, I just mean, you, you have to verify that it doesn't depend on the representative. Is that okay? Anyone else? So far, so good. Because, yeah, that was basically what I wanted to tell you for today. So uh, you can watch this. And then on Tuesday, I, again, I'll mention another special topic, which I think would be worth like bringing, um, uh, giving you explicitly. And then once we return from the Thanksgiving break, we'll, we'll go back to the usual. Again, I don't think there are that many topics left. So eventually I'll just, what I'll try to do is like add more problems to this extra problems list throughout the break so that we can like turn more of the classes into like, you know, workshops or more like review sessions like we have been doing. Because like topic wise, I'm pretty happy with what we have covered. I'll just finish checking the book to see if there's like some extra details that I should, I have omitted that I should tell you, but they're not, I mean, there's not that much material left. Uh, so, but this is definitely one important topic and I'll definitely ask you about it on the final because like is, uh, I'll probably, I'll try to find other examples uh, to uh, about this to add to the problems list so that we can go over them if that's okay. But yeah, if, if there are no more, if there are no questions, I'll see you. Well, I wouldn't, uh, it depends on how, what you mean, uh, factorize itself. Um, you you have to like you have to uh, it, it, uh, uh well right like I'm not sure uh, what you mean by factorize but it's more like you if I, if like you have an equivalence relation and if you want to define something based on that equivalence relation the answer cannot depend on the specific way uh, you wrote the equivalent equivalence class. Okay, because again, like the equivalence class of one half is the same as the equivalence class of two quarters. So the answer cannot depend on that fact. Uh, in this case, because everything is kind of in terms of ratios, yeah, it's kind of like there, there are common factors that cancel out, basically. I guess that's maybe what you what we had in mind. But I'll find other examples. And in terms, uh, when you see the other examples, uh, maybe this like factorization uh, is not like the way you would think about it.
it okay yeah i i think i'll just add more examples like and once i uh, more problems to the extra problems list about this and once i do that like it will be, become more clear like uh what does it mean to check that something is well defined um Anyone else? Okay, well, I'll upload this video later tonight. Uh, what, uh, in the evening, I'll send you an announcement and I'll upload the notes, as I said. And yeah, I'll see you on Tuesday if that sounds good. If not, enjoy your weekend. Otherwise... You too, you too. Bye.